So we're here at the uh, Lenaro Connect, and uh, who are you? Uh, my name is Grant Likely. I am a fellow at uh, Lenaro. I was, and uh, I'm also the Linux Foundation tab chairperson. That's the technical advisory board at the Linux Foundation. So what does it mean to be a fellow at Lenaro? Uh, I have just been promoted to that position. So. Uh, for a fellowship, it means that I have I'm recognized as a technical expert within Lenaro, and I have the ability to pay attention to all the things that are going on in the company, and uh, give technical expertise and advice, and try to help develop the strategy or what Lenaro is trying to do as a whole. And you also have the Lina uh, Linux Foundation, right? What do you That's do there? That's right. Uh, I I was uh, last. Uh, August, I was elected to the Linux Foundation Technical Advisory Board, and the Technical Advisory Board represents Linux kernel developers to the Linux Foundation. So when the Linux Foundation has questions about how they should respond, what Linux developers care about, uh, they'll often talk to the tab, and the tab will give them good advice. So I was elected to the, to the tab, and then the tab elected me as their chairperson in the first meeting. So, um, you've been at Lenaro since the beginning of Lenaro? Pretty close to the beginning, that's right. So, what is Lenaro? What's been going on since the beginning? Oh. So, Lenaro has been a big part of making sure that, that the Linux ecosystem works well. To begin with, we started with mobile. Uh, a lot of it was getting the ARM SOC vendors, helping them get their Linux BSBs up and running, making sure that things run well, optimizing power management, and working on common frameworks. Since then, we've uh, split off into some other areas, such as uh, server and networking equipment, and also um, uh, home and uh, the, the home group. So with each of the groups that we've been working on, it's been a different aspect of the market. Uh, mobile, of course, is phones, but enterprise is something else. With enterprise, the set of problems are different. With mobile, with phones, we've got uh, a Linux kernel and a piece of hardware, and the vendor builds the whole thing, and they make sure that it all works together. Enterprise has a different set of constraints, which is the operating system vendor and the hardware vendor are two different companies. So in order for that to work, there's a bunch of effort that needs to be put in to make sure that those that the hardware and the software are all interoperable. So then a big part of what Lenaro has been doing is making sure that those pieces are in place. Figuring out what we need to do, figuring out what firmware needs to look like, defining the helping to choose the standards, make the standards work, and helping companies to then deploy their their equipment. So a big part of what Lenaro ends up doing is defining what the platform for ARM software is, defining how software and hardware work together so that the software, to make the software portable, robust, and work well together. So that means Lenar has a cool, uh, important role to play with enterprise. That's, yes, it's, it's been a big part of, of enterprise. We're just now seeing hardware arriving on the market. 64-bit uh, ARM hardware that is suitable for putting into data centers. And the whole reason that works is because of all the companies working together. And we've driven a lot of that from within Lenaro. And Lenaro has also been doing a lot of big little stuff, right? Yes, that's right. That's, uh, that's been a big part of ARM's strategy of being able to uh, handle power man the, the very diverse power management concerns where you want to have really good high performance but at the same time, uh, very low power, low battery usage, so that you know your mobile phone stays. Uh, you know, it'll last more than uh, a couple of days on a battery. And Big Little has been a big part of that. Big Little is a neat solution because you're able to have the high power core as well as the uh, energy efficient core. But it also adds a lot of significant challenges because scheduling on two different processors that have different performance characteristics is a hard problem. So Lenaro has been involved along with, uh, with ARM in figuring out how to make good use of this equipment. Uh, the first stage of that has been, was the um, big little task switcher where we were able to move uh, processing from, we were able to pair up big cores, the uh, energy efficient cores and the uh, um, powerful cores to one virtual CPU and switch back and forth between them. That was the easy solution. 
the more sophisticated solution is then the energy aware scheduling where all the cores are available to Linux and Linux is able to make good decisions. So uh, this is a, a, has been a big project that's between uh, ARM engineers and Lenaro engineers to figure out how to, to solve the problem and also make the make the solutions that we come up with acceptable to the upstream Linux kernel. So it's been going on for like uh, two, three years already? Yes, it is. And uh, so there's been a few 32-bit big little products, but uh, it seems in 64-bit there's lots of people very happy with the solution. Like, th there's lots of them lined up, coming out, big little that, stuff. That uh, is correct, yes. And this is uh, phones and this is this is consumer stuff also. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. And I, I, I can't comment a whole lot on the actual products that are coming out because I've, yeah. I'm not familiar with the with our members' plans as well as I'd like to be. Uh, but yes, there is uh, more big little stuff, and you can watch. You'll be able to see more big little stuff coming out in the future. So, what is all this talk about ACPI, UEFI? Uh, so, and what are you what are you doing with that? And what what are people doing with that around here in Linaro? Right. So. Firmware architecture has been uh, has been a big topic of Lenaro right from the beginning because that defines how we get the kernel onto the board. And traditionally, on especially on ARM embedded platforms, firmware has required a lot of effort. Uh, for distributions, it was painful because they would have to uh, they'd have to do different the different support for each and every board that was created. They would have to have a custom script to install on a BeagleBone versus installing on, say, the, the Snowball board. With Embedded, that was somewhat acceptable, but when we got into, when we started looking at Enterprise, it really pushed that we had to be thinking about platforms. We had to be thinking about how do we abstract and define a common interface so that an operating system vendor or distribution vendor like Debian or Red Hat would be able to work with any of the hardware vendors without having to do special stuff. Uh, it means that both the hardware vendors and the software vendors are working to the same specification. And that's really where uh, UEFI and ACPI came in. UEFI defines the interface for how to get the kernel booted onto the board. And ACPI is one of the methods that's, or one method that can be used to describe the hardware to the operating system. But ACPI was actually quite controversial because in the ARM world, uh, we had already chosen the device tree method of describing hardware. And I'm actually the device tree maintainer for the Linux kernel. The reason it was, <coughs> um, the reason it was controversial is device tree and ACPI have, uh, have slightly different models. Device tree is based on the model of you describe everything about the hardware as much as possible and you let the kernel figure it out. <clears throat> uh, so the, the assumption is, is that if you've got new hardware or slightly different hardware that can't be described uh, or that the kernel doesn't understand, that you'll change the kernel or modify the kernel to make it work. And that works well in embedded because the hardware vendor and the software vendor are the same company. With the uh, enterprise market, the hardware vendor needs to have some ability to abstract and to implement some of the behavior in the firm in the platform firmware. And the reason they need to do that is when they ship a new product, they need to work with existing releases of the operating system. <coughs> so ACPI differs from device tree because it provides a level of abstraction. And it does that with, uh, uh, with a bytecode interpreter. The reason it's controversial is that takes some of the control of how the platform works out of the kernel and gives it to the platform. And us as kernel engineers, for the control freaks that we are, we don't like the loss of control. But the reality of the market, of what's needed to actually support products that are out there, is we can't do that. We can't have control over everything. And it's already been proven in, uh, in the x86 market, which has a huge variety of hardware. Uh, that there has to be some level of abstraction and we have to share control over how the platform works uh, with the hardware vendors. It's not something that can purely be done in the operating system if we're going to support separate operating system and hardware vendors. So that means the Red Hat and the Canonicals and all that stuff is just going to be like a release, just going to work with a whole bunch of 
different hardware and future proof backwards compatible Absolutely. all that stuff and Absolutely. this is already working this is already working uh, there are UEFI support is already in mainline for the Linux kernel on 64-bit and 32-bit. AC, ACPI patches are on the Linux kernel mailing list, and they've uh, been, re been yeah, well reviewed, uh, and we are getting close to being able to merge them. There's no guarantees on when it's actually going to be merged, but we're hoping to, uh, to have it merged in the near future. So uh, that's a pretty big deal, though. For, it's a very so that big means deal. that means the ARM servers can kick kick off, like take 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 the whole market now, or is it ready? I will <laughs> not make any predictions on the market, but I think we're going to see very very interesting products coming out uh, with ARM servers. The nice thing, what's very exciting about ARM servers, is that the SOC vendors have quite a lot of flexibility in adding accelerators and interesting hardware to the side of the CPU all on the same die and doing interesting products with that. So there's going to, you're going to see interesting networking products that come out of that. You're going to see interesting products for, uh, for web serving or for hyperscale. Uh, and the amount of flexibility that vendors have, that the hardware vendors have by, able, by being able to choose different silicon vendors means we're going to see just a a more interesting variety of equipment that's available. But with 14, 16 nanometer, all these crazy new smaller CPUs, the, the, there's more and more space for all kinds of crazy stuff on the, on the die, right? But isn't that the problem? Isn't that like, uh, how can this release of Ubuntu just work if you have all these uh, crazy new stuff? Okay, so that's the trick. Do you the still have to is, customize it? Well, the trick is, is you make the boring stuff boring. The boring stuff is, can I boot my operating system? Can I get into user space? Can I start running regular applications? That stuff is boring. There's, there's nothing special about that. And extra crazy stuff on the silicon doesn't affect that. So we want to have a common boot interface. We want someone with a Red Hat or a uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux or an Ubuntu disk or a Debian uh, installer to be able to get it up and running without any extra effort. That should be easy. Then. All of the extra accelerators or any of the extra hardware becomes uh, additional device drivers. And that's easy to support. Once you've got the operating system up and running, for someone to make use of that, there's not, they don't have to do a huge amount of extra work to add a device driver for an accelerator or to expose an accelerator to user space so that an application can make use of it. So it's drivers that kind of automatically get installed it's, or something that gets It's pulled? drivers that are either made, they're, ideally those drivers will be put into mainline Linux and immediately available to the, because the distribution will build them in. Uh, but, you know, for released versions of Linux, we already have uh, a method of distributing source for a, for a device driver that gets built by the distribution when it gets installed uh, so that a vendor can provide new hardware with new accelerators, and if the, accel the driver for the accelerator isn't in the operating system, there's still a way to get it in. So we see awesome Thunder X with 48 cores. Yep. We see a 16-core Huawei uh, yep. today, high silicon. It's, all these things are awesome. And you talk about accelerator. What is an accelerator? Is an accelerator is, when we talk about cores, we're talking about the core CPU. But that's not the only thing that goes into these silicon. So if we were, for example, to talk about a networking device, uh, there is a lot of acceleration that can be put into the silicon for handling, say, TCP offload or uh, doing um, CSC calculations. There's, by putting that into hardware, it means that there's less load on the CPU. And it also means that some of that processing can be done with lower latency and lower jitter. So anytime we're talking about accelerators, we're talking about common compute intensive operations that the silicon can take care of before it even touches the kernel. If we're talking about a network, network equipment, one of the examples would be uh, if you're building a router, you would want to have packets coming in, processed by the hardware and sent out with the C without the CPU touching them at all. When you can do that, it means you can get a much greater data rate without loading down the application processor. So it's super optimized hardware 
yeah. for specific use cases. And uh, it can be. is it DSPs or what? Is it GPUs? What what kind of accelerator was talking about? It's not whatever. ARM processors. What, whatever the silicon vendor wants. There's all kinds of different things that can do that kind of stuff. Right, but they just look like peripherals to Linux. So. Any accelerator hardware, when Linux comes up, it will see that as a peripheral, peripheral, it'll load a driver to use it, and then that driver will know what to do with it, whether it's setting up traffic flows so that the application never sees it, or working in concert with the application. So if it was a graphics processor, you know, very similar to OpenGL, the graphics processor handles a lot of the processing of getting pixels out to the screen so that the CPU doesn't have to do it. It's the same concept. All right. So, uh, when, so one last question. I'll try. Yes. So there's all these uh, distros and the bloatware is not going to be there, right? It's going to be super optimized stuff. And uh, the way it's this whole architecture that you're talking about uh, is just going to be smooth and ultra optimized and then more features is does that make sense what I'm asking uh, so I think this goes back to the answer that I was making earlier we want the boring stuff boring and the exciting stuff exciting uh, the boring stuff is all of the regular things to get a distribution going and that is reasonably optimized distribution so that we can run OpenStack on, on a server, so that we can run all of the uh, applications that are, a user expects on an x86 machine. Then the exciting stuff is taking that base, using that as a base, and then optimizing on top of that. And that is adding in optimized libraries so that you can offload part of your uh, your TC, you know, TCPI off offload is a good example. Uh, it, it means that the optimization doesn't have to be done on the whole system, but the optimization can be done on the specific area that there's, uh, that there's a bottleneck. And that optimization is done with hardware or software or combination of both, of, of right. the two. So one more last question. Yes. <laughs> so all these engineers here in the Lenaro, is, uh, is there, is it, are you able to get everything done? What, what's, who's, who's should contribute? And uh, how is it going right now? The industry is, are you thinking that maybe there's not enough manpower? Is there enough? Or uh, is it getting organized right? Uh, well, I mean, depending on, if you talk to project managers, we always need more manpower. Uh, I think uh, overall we are, we're doing very well. We've got some incredible engineers working at Lenaro. We have a lot of uh, maintainers of upstream projects who are employees or assignees to Lenaro. Uh, so I'm just thrilled with the team that I get to work with here. The progress is really smooth. The, the, the progress good. is really good. I think we've had some incredible success in mobile in helping to define some of the um, uh, some of the technologies that our silicon vendors really care about. Uh, Leg has been a when Leg started two and a, uh, almost two and a half years ago, that was a big test for us on getting into a new area, and that's been incredibly successful. Uh, we're just at, on the verge of seeing products on the market uh, that could be deployed at, at large scale. Uh, so I, I think we're doing, doing very well, and the proof is in the the quality of software that's available on the ARM architecture now. I mean, now we're get, we've got uh, another of the projects that we've been working on has been in the Lenaro networking group on uh, Open Data Plane, and Open Data Plane has really been pushing some of the uh, some of the accelerated interfaces that we need to do high-speed networking with ARM processors. But in doing that, we've discovered that a lot of the stuff that we're working on is equally applicable to the other architectures. So now ODP is very much looking at, there, the spec is being defined in a way that will work for any architecture, but we're driving it on ARM. Which is really exciting to see, to be in a place where ARM is driving the, the new technology.